Hi, my name is Lucy and I'm 46. I'm a mum of four. When we started seeing reports from China on coronavirus, I don't remember being that worried. It was so far away. As the news gathered momentum, I knew it was going to be big. I felt like I sensed it more than my friends. It didn't seem containable. In the first few days of it entering the country, there was a sense that people were overreacting. I searched the internet for reassuring information to tell me it was just like flu. My husband told me it was just like flu. Other people said it was just like flu. I started to panic when I couldn't find any. My first emotion was depression. It was almost instant, like a big, black, heavy blanket. I have been feeling so good, the best I ever have emotionally. Work was picking up after a year of hard work. I was looking forward to so much this year. And then, bam, this comes along. After the depression came the flight or fight. Watching Boris deliver his press conference, I wanted to run away, escape from it all. But I couldn't. I felt angry and irritable. I felt sick and terrified. Social media was horrendous, like throwing petrol on a fire. One extreme would be people saying we're all going to die and horrendous inside stories of China and Italy. The other extreme was those in denial, no point in hand washing. It was just like flu. I went shopping on March the 7th to buy a dress for a christening. I had a very strong sense of the calm before the storm. An eeriness of normality that was about to end. It was heavy and ominous. Maybe I've identified too much with the home movies of happy Jewish families just before their life was about to change in, in the Holocaust horrors. Or the refugees whose knife life, knives lives were turned upside down with violence and fear. Or the dystopian films that I do like to watch. On Friday the 13th I made myself make shop deliveries. My plan to get a new outlet shelved for a while but making sure the ones I had were stocked whether they would have customers. I didn't really think they would but I felt like I should keep going as the world around me seemed to keep going. In the cafes I delivered in and sat and drank coffee all seemed normal. Life was going on as usual. It was nice to have snippets of normality, but how long this would last before everyone could not deny what was happening, I didn't know. It feels like a tsunami rolling in, in that way that looks like it's slow motion. You know it's coming, you can see it gathering momentum, but those around you have their backs turned and you just want to tell them to run and they don't. I've always been a bit OCD. I've learnt not to bite my nails or lick my fingers. I am very germ aware, as I call it. Over the last couple of years, I have made an effort not to worry so much and to be normal. I'm not sure if I feel cross my efforts are wasted or pleased. I have a well rehearsed hand wash and germ awareness going on. Every night I wake up thinking at 4 a.m. whether this is another menopausal hot sweat or um, whether it's a fever. I'm sure I can't be the only one. The exhaustion of analysing symptoms, not necessary for the fear of yourself having it, although I am a bit fearful, I admit, but the fear of being the one who passes it on, especially to someone vulnerable. My oldest daughter is at uni, third year, after a placement year in Germany. Four years of hard work and now this. This upsets me. My graduation was due in June and it was going to be one of the highlights for me, along with being at the birth of my friend's baby. That's not going to happen. And silly things like watching my younger son in the country dancing festival. Um, something he really enjoys and, you know, that's not going to happen. There's so many things that are not going to happen and it does make you really sad. And I know I've got it good compared to many. So my life surviving plan is to make a point of life. I'm going to try and document my journey through COVID-19. And I hope it's the most boring, unavailable documentary you will watch in the respect that this isn't as bad as I think it might be. But I hope it will be an insight into what life is going to be like for 
us as a family over the next few months. So here it is, COVID-19. That was a good day. So it was a good day. We met some really interesting people. Yeah. And we heard some nice stories. Yes, I love a good story. Not so good at telling one, but I'm a good listener. Oh, top of <laughs> Very good at nodding. And it's just, isn't it brilliant to see all the kids so excited and telling us yeah. stories and just seeing those little sparks fly in their heads. You're looking very pensive. <laughs> I think I've something interesting to say. Oh. I'm exhausted. I don't know about you. I am exhausted. Being surrounded by children. It's children's energy. <laughs> they're lovely, but they're life sapping sometimes. Are you biting me? Oh dear. It's because we've done so much work this week. Yeah. Been a busy week, but a good one. More children. for a lovely walk along um, Sandown Seafront. I think now we're going to go in to see, make the most of the sunshine and being outdoors. The Chief Medical Officer and the Chief Scientific Officer. So now to digest all of the important and many sombre lines in that news conference, let's talk to our health correspondent, James Gallagher, who joins me in the studio. Uh, James, so many aspects of that. What were the key moments for you? I think the most striking thing about the whole of that uh, briefing was the UK government saying this is now not a virus that can be contained. This is a virus that is going to hit and have profound impacts on society, on people. Boris Johnson saying the worst public health crisis for a generation Many more families are going to lose loved ones before their time. This is no longer something that could be contained. We're now talking about how can we delay it and how can we ensure that it happens at a time that is in a position for the what is happening around the world. The UK's chief medical advisor said that there was a danger in moving to more drastic measures too early. It could do more harm than good. They're working on the assumption that Britain will not see peak infection rates for weeks, maybe as many as three months away. So for now, there will be no UK-wide ban on large sporting gatherings and schools will remain open. But as Britain moves from the containment phase to trying to delay the spread of the disease, there was new advice on what we should be doing. If anyone in your family or workplace has a persistent cough or a fever, they should stay at home for a week. It comes amid another jump in confirmed cases to just short of 600. So I can't be the only person who's kind of um, concerned about how this is going to go. Um, I just watched the press conference and actually thought that was quite good and it made sense from what he was saying. I've already decided and taken the move not to go out to parties and things um, just because I don't have to um, and choose where I go and whether it's a necessity or not, I'm not going to change my whole life. But I think it's about being sensible. It makes me cross people saying, oh, I'm not going to wash hands. And I think people genuinely don't want to believe it's as bad as it is. And it is bad. Um, it's no getting around that. It is bad. And we've all got to do our bit to help the vulnerable in our society and and that mainly is washing hands and staying at home if you're ill um just wash your bloody hands people it's not hard it's annoying but it's not hard just do it anyway so i've decided to document the next hopefully few months and see how this all pans out when it all started, I felt depressed because 
my, everything I was looking forward to had been taken away. Last night I felt fear because we don't entirely know what's going to happen. This morning the sun's out. I'm going to go and do some normal stuff whilst I can. Well, Dwight has been speaking to businesses in Bristol to see how they've been adapting to the new way. Diners arriving at the urban town door in Bristol are left under no illusions. These are far from ordinary days. This time 12 months ago, the restaurant was packed with racegoers from the nearby Cheltenham Festival, but not this year. A mirror left, which means with the government's plans, the headline there is, it's war on the virus. Okay, so it's um, Sunday morning, the 6th, no, 15th of March. Um, I was up in the night again and watching Sorry. Um, yeah, I was up at midnight and I put the news on and we were debating last night before we went to bed that Hetty's got a cold and a sore throat and I've got a sore throat which I've had on and off for, I don't know, a little while. But I quite often have a sore throat. And that difficulty of knowing at what point you think, okay, well... I better isolate myself just in case, even though it's something that I have on and off for a while. But today, I have to admit, I've woken up, and I think this is something different from what I've had before. Because it's more coldy and sore throaty than it is respiratory. However, after watching the news last night, apparently 200 um, or more scientists have said that Boris Johnson's doing the wrong thing. I kind of feel a bit apprehensive that we're leaving it a little bit too late. And knowing that children spread germs like anything and they're not showing their symptoms so much, they might show it like Hetty is, like with a with the cold. Um, and I've got a mum who's probably higher risk. She's older, she's 70. Five this year. Oh, I think. Oh, I can't remember. She's born in '44, and um, she's had pneumonia twice. I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk giving it to her. So, I think in the night I decided that Petty better stay off school because she's got this cold. And probably Benji better stay off, and then. On that, I'm thinking, well, if that's seven days, I reckon in another seven days we might have moved on even more and Boris might have taken the decision to go into lockdown or shut the schools. So I'm thinking, actually, I've been ahead of the game with how this is going to go, I think. I think I've picked on it up on quite quickly what's happening as opposed to some people it's taken longer for them to get their head around it i think because i can keep them at home that i will keep them at home and as boris johnson's main reason i think for keeping them in school is because parents have to work and i'm self-employed and work from home i think I'm going to take the decision to keep them off school. I think I'll watch some more news later. I'm not doing social media and I haven't been on social media for a couple of days, which has actually really helped my anxiety levels, I have to say. And I'm bloody lucky to have a nice house and a garden. You know, we, it's a big enough house that we can get away from each other and we're not going to kill each other. So long-term isolation isn't horrendous. And I understand for some people it could be. 
airline cancelling flights to Spain. The airline announced it would be suspending all flights through Tuesday. It comes as the world's biggest carrier, American Airlines, has announced it's suspending nearly all of its long-haul flights through tomorrow. The White House says President Trump has tested negative for coronavirus. Mr. Trump That's a shame. The check after being exposed to an infection, an infected person. Ministers supported by scientific and medical experts holding briefings following criticism that there's been a lack of transparency over plans to stem the spread of the virus. Many people admit they're anxious, particularly after the government said that in the coming weeks, everyone over the age of 70 could be told to stay at home, potentially for a period of months. Now, this is the reality. Having done the test online, Hetty can't go to school because she's got a cough, even though I know it's cold, probably. I can't risk it. And I've also had to tell my mum today not to come round because I don't want to risk giving it to her. So I, I'm guessing that our house is on, um, I don't know, being sensible, not going out. Not going too many places where there's lots of people. Otherwise, even if we're just catching colds all the time, we'd have to not go out and do anything. Because you just don't know. I can hear her coughing now. I don't think it's coronavirus. I think it's a cold, but I'm not prepared to take the risk. Or well, everybody would define it differently. That's what I mean. So, but the reality is, you know, if you want social distancing to have an impact, it, it really... It does come down to sort of an element of isolation. Think me as a doctor and think of those green planes as coronavirus. He wants to go with her. Uh, Sue, first we have to vaccinate you and everyone else. Humanity is fragile. Oh. And all the sunshine in the world can't save the frail or make the delicate invincible. <coughs> but love has the power to strengthen and protect and guide us to a place where we feel sheltered and fulfilled. Days? Is he at the same room as your bus cut? Yeah, but mine's better. Press briefings now we're going to get from either the Prime Minister or a senior government minister. That's right, Diane. It will feel, I think, a lot more serious, this uh, outbreak and the reaction to it, since we'll be getting these daily briefings. As you say, if the Prime Minister isn't available, a senior government minister will be there, and also uh, the expert advice that they've been relying on, chief medical officer. Just made the mistake of going on social media and going on our local coronavirus group which the first post that i saw was somebody talking about children getting it and how it's a lie that they can't and people are hiding the figures of children that have died or got ill so now i'm back to square one having kind of got my head round <clears throat> not worrying too much now i'm like oh you yeah, know i don't want anything to happen to my children so anyway, I'm choosing to file that. I'm thinking, well, possibly these children had underlying health issues, even if people didn't know it. And probably it's still not very common for children to have problems. So if you have a daily briefing uh, led by the chief medical officer, I just think everything will sort of start to feel uh, more more calm. Uh, people will get used to it and they will... It does feel like the war time, doesn't it, when you had your daily or um, <clears throat> you'd have your broadcast from Sir Winston. Winston? You'd have your broadcast from Winston Churchill and everybody would crowd around their radio to see what was happening. It's funny how you settle into a new normality and I think people are doing it slowly. I think some people are still living in their own world and I still see events being planned and advertised on Facebook for next week, the week after and I can't see how they're going to happen and I can't decide whether people are hopeful, naive um, denial, I don't know
I don't know what the reason is, or I don't know why people are carrying on. I suppose I've done a couple of posts on my Seabell page, but um, my last one was the other day, actually, and um, I might put up some things that I make, but it's not events. I think we're just now settling in to a new kind of normality. I think the key is to keep up with what's happening but um, to avoid social media and actually so my plan in now is really to my plan now is really to watch BBC Breakfast in the morning and see what's happening that morning and then maybe turn it off all day and do my own thing do a bit of gardening, a bit of art and then maybe put it on in the evening And thank you for watching uh, with us this morning as we're sort of finding out more and more with each interview really speaking to the experts. Um, we've got the weather coming up soon with uh, Carol. Just been out in the garden, but I've just come in and sitting drinking my coffee watching this morning and John Sherrode showing people how to cook, like what's in their cupboards. And basically, he's cooking the meals that I've been cooking for years, like a bit of tomato sauce, a bit of tomato, onion, olives as a seasoning. Ooh, I've been doing that for ages. Kind of, they're contemplating the fact that maybe people will change how they cook and eat, maybe eat less. You know, I think out of all these things, you know, good things come. And maybe... After all this, people will live differently and will think about how lucky we are to have food when we need food and to not eat too much of it and not waste too much. And maybe more people will look out for their neighbours and their communities. So maybe maybe some good will come. Pasta for jolly. So pasta for jolly is beans and pasta. Beans are full of protein. Flip it out. That's what I've been making for years. Why? A change to the schedule now on BBC One. We join Hugh Edwards for a BBC News special. It's 4.30. You're watching a BBC News special with the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. And we'll be live in Downing Street for the Prime Minister's news conference very shortly. So far, there are 1,543 confirmed cases of the virus. What about trying to shield the most vulnerable, reduce the number of new cases that the NHS might need to deal with? So I expect we will be hearing more about protecting people over the age of 70, people with health conditions, pre-existing health conditions, and more advice about social isolation. So we Downing Street. Uh, where the news conference is just about to get up the road. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. I wanted to bring everyone up to date with the national fight back against the new coronavirus and the decisions that we've just taken in COBRA for the whole of the, of the UK. Uh, as we said last week, our objective is to delay and flatten the peak of the epidemic by bringing forward the right measures at the right time so that we minimise suffering and save life. And everything we do is based scrupulously on the best scientific advice. Last week, we asked everyone to stay at home if you had one of two key symptoms, a high temperature or a new and continuous cough. Today, we need to go further because according to SAGE, uh, the Scientific Advisory Committee on Emergencies, it looks as though we're now approaching the fast growth part of the upward curve. And without drastic action, cases could double every five or six days. So first, we need to ask you to ensure that if you or anyone 
in your household as one of those two symptoms, then you should stay at home for 14 days. That means that if possible, you should not go out even to buy food or essentials other than for exercise, and in that case... you got to have a week off school. And London is ahead of other parts of the country. We at the outset laid out a plan and advised that we would implement it, the measures, at the right stage and in the right combination, the right combination to ensure that we get the biggest impact. Unfortunately, that time is now for many of these measures. What we're doing is implementing them actually at a stage of the epidemic, which is a little bit earlier than has been done in some other countries. Yeah, what well, is sort of less and less sport, really, Sally, and another one big kind of you exactly. know, important really event big gone. Changing picture, and also, you know, there's, there's so many awful things going on at the moment. You might think, well, does it really matter that things are being cancelled? But actually, the news that we heard late last night that the Grand National is off is quite significant, isn't it? It's the people's race. It's that one race. I think every morning I wake up and you forget and then you remember and then you think that's a bit surreal am I dreaming this because things like this just don't happen people thought them out you know things like this don't happen and it's really hard getting your head around the fact that it is and it's real I still think people are struggling with that concept well we both like those then so this is Benji's outfit for the day. So today we are going to make nettle soup. That's the plan. We've picked the nettles, we've watered the things that we put in yesterday, and we've made a little plan of action which started being in the garden. I feel like at the moment this is okay and it might not be in two weeks time. And Benji's squirting me with water. Great, I know the law. Cleaning your fingers. What have you been painting? Those. So you're gonna to have to make sure they dry before you use them. One's called Sandy. You you will need to pick a number. Right. Ket oh, ket it's gonna be a photo finish. Good morning, I'm Anne Janet Gadgill. Businesses in the South are concerned for their future after the Prime Minister said people should avoid going to pubs clubs and theatres to curb the spread of coronavirus. Schools are mostly still open, but one local authority has already closed. Important to them. Infections and pregnancy are not a good combination in general, and that is why we've taken the very precautionary measure, whilst we try and find out more, to include pregnant women in the group alongside older women and people who've got pre-existing significant health conditions. We may I keep expecting that red to get quieter, but it doesn't seem to. I guess it will. Oh, 